Hi, welcome to Rules Challenge. My name is Carter Maxwell. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the second edition of Great Western Trail. Now, I don't rules-wise, I don't think there's a whole lot different from the first edition, but uh, if you are playing with the first edition, there will be some subtle changes. For everyone new to the show, this is basically just a test of your knowledge of the rules of the game. But instead of j just asking you questions from the rule book, I'll be playing through more or less a regular game, uh, but at the end of each turn, I'll just stop and ask legal or illegal, and uh, it's your job to figure out if what was done during that turn was correct or not. I deliberately emphasize rules that people do tend to get wrong or forget, so in addition to being a test, it also functions somewhat like an FAQ. A couple of things I should note before we get started on the challenge. One is just uh, a change I had to make to the way uh, the game is set up for the purposes of the video. You'll see all the players uh, hands of cards face up the whole time and you know obviously that's so you can see what they're holding and playing um, of course you wouldn't do that in a regular game also I should apologize for the the buzzing of my lights uh, I have tinnitus and I tend to not notice when they're buzzing but I, I did realize it when I was editing the the video so um, sorry if that gets to be annoying it's it's not throughout the whole video there's just a, a few shots where you'll notice it in the background and the last thing is, just to avoid confusion, there is at least one question in here where at some point I got mixed up and, and instead of saying he did this, I started saying she did this or vice versa. And um, you know, don't worry, you didn't accidentally fast forward to the next question. I just got mixed up at some point. So don't get confused if it sounds like all of a sudden I'm talking about a different player within the same term. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on the rules challenge. We're starting things off with Red. He's just come back from Kansas City and he's ready to pick up at the start of the trail again. So we'll stand him up here and move him uh, one step to the neutral building A. That building allows him to discard a, a white cow for $2. I'm just gonna call them like white cows or black cows because I can never remember the names of the breeds. So he'll discard this card and gain two dollars. Then he can hire up to two workers, one for a regular cost and one at a penalty of two dollars. He only wants to hire one worker and so he'll just pay a regular price. And he wants this cowboy here on the six dollar row. So he'll pay those six dollars to the bank and take that tile. He'll add the cowboy to his player board and to wrap up his turn, he'll draw back up to five cards. Uh, five because he's unlocked this space here. So we'll draw a new card, and that'll end his turn. Red mistakenly hired a worker from the row with the job market token. It's an easy mistake to make. Don't forget that the workers on the same row as that job market token are off limits. Once that token gets pushed down to the next row, then any workers on this row become available. And it really does crazy things to the game if you do make this mistake, because it messes up the game clock. When workers are moved out of the Foresight area of Kansas City into the job market, they're placed on the row with the job market token, and when this fills up, it gets pushed down. If you keep buying workers from the same row, it'll tend to cause this thing to not get pushed down and thus not advance the game at all. So if it feels like your games are going on forever, you might want to double check and make sure that you haven't been buying workers from this row because that could cause the game to go a lot longer than it normally would. Now it's Yellow's turn, just like Red. He's at the start of the trail, so we'll stand him up and move him to building A as well. Yellow doesn't have a white card to discard, so he'll move right on to hiring workers, and he's just going to hire one at the regular cost. He'll hire this engineer from the $7 row. So he'll pay the $7, I'll pay 10 and get back 3 and then he'll place the engineer. Uh, that space has a bonus, um, so uh, he can discard a gray cow to advance the certificate cube. So 
He'll discard a gray cow, advance to the cube one space, and put the tile in place. Then he'll draw back up to five cards, because he's also unlocked that. So he'll draw a new card, place it in his hand. That was a pretty basic turn, but there are a couple things worth talking about here for newer players. One is, you know, notice that yellow was not able to do the first action of discarding a white card, but nevertheless was, you know, able to take the uh, another action here, and that's fine. You don't need to take every action on a on a building. Uh, you know, it's not all or nothing. Uh, these are three distinct actions, and you take whichever of them you're able to or want to. Another thing worth mentioning was how Yellow was able to uh, gain that bonus for placing that engineer tile on this space. Now it wasn't evident here because you didn't see the earlier turns in the game, but Yellow has had engineers here before and placed them out onto the map when claiming a Station Master tile. And sometimes people will say, well wait a second, you know, you've already claimed this bonus once before and then removed the engineer, you don't get to keep placing it, you know, keep gaining that bonus every time you place an engineer there. But actually, you do. In fact, that's a nice strategic element of the game. You can keep churning these, th this bonus, you know, place an engineer, place them out onto a, a station and obtain a new engineer, place it here, get that bonus all over again. As many times as you can manage to place a tile here, you can keep gaining that bonus. That's true of all these spaces. All right, moving on to Blue's turn. Uh, Blue's ready to move into Kansas City, but first, he does not like his hand of cards. So first, he's going to spend his exchange token, and then he'll draw two new cards. We've got a black and a black. So he'll discard a black and a white. Now she'll move her herder into Kansas City and choose this bandit, put it into place. And then the uh, builder here and this builder here and that'll move the job market token down. Then she'll move up to the fourth spot where she'll calculate the value of her herd. She has four different breeds for a total of two, three, four, five, six, seven. She wants to make it an eight, so she'll spend a certificate and she'll gain uh, eight dollars. And then she'll discard those cards. Now Blue has to place a disc and she can go as far as Peoria since that's at level eight. She'll take a white disc from her player board. She'll place the disc on Peoria. And since she's crossing two red X's ahead of her train, she'll pay $2 for that. Now, because she linked Bloomington and Peoria, she'll gain an objective card. Then she'll select an objective card she likes. She'll take this one here and refill the display. Then she'll put it into play next to her starting objective card. And because she's chosen to activate this right away, she'll advance her train three spaces. One, two, three. She'll move her herder to the start of the trail. She'll draw back up to four cards because she hasn't unlocked the ability to do more. So one, two, three, four. And then to wrap up her turn, she'll refill the four site spaces uh, from bag one, bag two, and bag three. The mistake Blue made was in immediately putting that new objective card into play. It's a common mistake because it's something you do so often in other games where you gain some sort of objective card, you put it into your play area, and you start working toward those goals right away. But remember that Great Western Trail works differently. Except for your starting objective card, which starts in play, whenever you gain a new objective card, it actually goes into your discard pile. 
and it'll stay in your herd deck and continue to cycle until you get it into your hand and decide to put it into play. I guess theoretically you could trash the card as well at some point, although I've never done that myself. And of course, at the end of the game, you would also have an opportunity to put the card into play then. Now it's Red's turn. He's going to take the uh, lower route here. So he'll take one step onto this hazard tile, and that has a black hand. So he'll pay one dollar to pass through there. And then he'll take a second step onto the red building here. Red doesn't have a white card to discard, and he still wants to make a little money before taking the cattle market action. So he's first going to take the risk action down here. He'll discard a gray card to gain one certificate and two dollars. So he'll discard that gray card and he's actually maxed out on certificates so he won't gain that uh, but he will gain the two dollars. Now he'll take that buy from the cattle market action. He counts that he has three cowboys with three cowboys, this option here allows him to buy one shorthorn cow for six dollars. So he'll pay those six dollars and take one of those cards. He'll add that new card to his discard pile and draw back up to five cards. And that'll end Red's turn. Everything on this turn was done correctly, but there were a few things that I think are interesting. One is, people are sometimes confused how to count uh, their workers on their player board, uh, whether or not to count this picture. So it was, it was correct that red counted one, two, three. Sometimes people assume that this is just showing you where the tiles go, but no, the picture that's pre-printed on your board counts as one cowboy, uh, one uh, builder, one engineer. Another thing I think is worth pointing out is uh, the way to handle this risk action space. Every once in a while you'll see somebody say, well, I don't have a gray card to discard, so I'll skip the gaining a certificate, so I'll just take the other side of the reward here and gain $2. But these aren't two separate actions, they're all linked together. Everything is conditioned on discarding a gray card. If you don't, get, if you don't do that, you don't get either of these rewards. Now yellow is up, and he's going to move two steps to this yellow building here. So one, two. He's going to first use this action here. Yellow will discard these two green cows and take three dollars. Now he'll use the second action on that building to advance his herder one step to this neutral building. He'll first refill his hand to five cards. We got a white cow and another green cow. Now he'll resolve the actions on this building. For the first one, he'll opt to take a new objective card. He'll take this one here and immediately refill the display. And he'll put that new card into his discard pile. And then the building's other action will allow him to advance his train one space for each engineer. He currently has two engineers, so he'll advance his train two spaces. One, two. He didn't spend any cards while at this building, and his hand's already full, so there's no need to refill, and that'll end his turn. Okay, this mistake might seem a little silly if you already have a couple plays under your belt, but it's an easy mistake for new players to make. They think, okay, I'm done with that building, I refill my hand, I move on to the next building, then I carry out the actions there. Or another one I see that has people going, God, this game is so hard, is uh, they at the end of their turn, they won't refill their hand. And they think they got to keep going through all these buildings with just one hand of cards until they get to Kansas City. Um, and then, you know, after that's done, can refill. That's just torture. So if you're a new player, remember your turn always entails three phases. Phase A, 
Move your herder to another location along the trail. Phase B, use the actions of your reach location. And C, draw up to your hand limit. This phase C, where you draw the new cards, is the very last thing you'll do on your turn. If you ever have trouble keeping straight, you know, what's supposed to be happening on a turn, uh, the player boards are actually really great for this. You know, they break it down into a phase A and show that it, you know, entails movement and pain for movement, um, using buildings and even breaks it down into, you know, like how it would work using your own building or a neutral building versus using someone else's building and so on. And then, you know, redrawing cards. So this is actually a really good resource I've found. Now it's Blue's turn and she's back at the start of the trail. So she'll just move one step to the neutral building A. First, she wants to discard a white cow for $2. So she'll do that. Gain the $2. And she's gonna make use of both of these actions to hire extra workers, one at the regular price and one uh, paying an extra $2. She'll go with the builder here on the $6 row and a builder here on the $6 row. And she'll pay $14 for that. Now she'll place them on her player board. And the second one is going to trigger a bonus where she can place a new building at the cost of just $1 per builder. She currently has six builders and she wants to place this building here which requires five workers. So she'll pay $5 for that, and she'll place the building. She still has one builder left that she hasn't used. So she'll use that last builder to upgrade this uh, building that requires two to a building that requires three. And she'll pay one more dollar for that one. She'll remove the building she just replaced from the game. She'll draw back up to her limit of four cards and that'll end her turn. That move was illegal because Blue did multiple builds with just one build action. A single build action allows you to do a single build. When Blue built a building using just five workers, that sixth worker then just should have gone unused. Now even though on this, on this turn, upgrading this building was done illegally. It's worth pointing out that um, the upgrade itself, a Blue did correctly. Sometimes uh, people don't handle the building that was replaced correctly. They'll replace a building and they'll put it back into their own play area so that they could build it again later in the game. But if you upgrade a building, it goes out of the game permanently. Now it's Red's turn, and he wants to move three steps. So he'll go one, two, he's passing through a green hand. He only has one dollar, so he'll pay that to blue. And then take his third step onto the yellow building. Since he's landed on an opponent's building, he's going to take an auxiliary action. Looking at his player board for the auxiliary actions, uh, he wants to do the one where you can draw a card and discard a card. And he's got that unlocked, so he's going to do that twice. So he'll draw two cards. And he has a green and a gray. He already has a gray, so he'll discard the new gray. And he'll discard one of his two blacks and keep the green. He's already at his hand limit of five, so that'll end his turn. Red's mistake was doubling this auxiliary action. People often overgeneralize when thinking about the auxiliary actions. They think if it's got two discs on it, it's still locked and I can't do it at all. If it's got just one disc on the right side, I can do it once. And if it has no disc covering it, I can do it twice. But there are two types of auxiliary actions, a single and a double. Looking at the player aid again, it shows that when you are on an opponent's building, you can take a single auxiliary action. In that case, it doesn't matter if you've unlocked 
the right side of the action or not, you only get to do it a single time. In order to take a double auxiliary action and make use of that unlocked right side, you need to be taking an action that's represented by this symbol, like on this building here. Something else from this turn that's worth pointing out, sometimes people will think if they need to pass through an opponent's building and don't have enough money to pay for it, that they're stuck, that they can't go through there, but that's not true. You can always pass through, you just have to pay as much as you can. In this case, Red had a dollar, so normally he would have paid two, but he just paid the dollar he had and he could continue on. Now it's Yellow's turn, and he's going to move his herder one step to this neutral building here. He's first going to use this action on the right side, which is a double auxiliary action. He'll take a look at what's available on his player board, and he first wants to take this action where he can spend a dollar to advance his train one space. So he'll pay the dollar, and he'll advance his train one space into the pullout. He wants to place a disc there, so he'll pay the $4 required for that. He'll select a white disc from his player board, and he'll put it on there. Now he wants to take that Station Master tile. He'll take a worker from his player board. He actually only has one to choose from. So take that engineer. He'll switch those tiles. Then he'll resolve the immediate reward of that tile on the top, which is gain two certificates. He can gain one and then he's maxed out. And then he'll just put this somewhere into his play area. He still has an action he can take on that building, so he'll go ahead and do that. And he'll opt for the one that allows him to pay $2 and advance his train two spaces. So he'll pay the $2 and advance his train, one, two. And that ends his turn. Yellow did everything fine that turn, but I think there are a couple things worth pointing out. First off, I should just mention that, you know, it is okay to take the action on the right side of the building first. You don't have to do them left to right. You can do them in whatever order suits you. Another thing is, you know, remember that taking the Station Master tile is optional. You could pull into the pullout and not do anything. You could pull into the pullout and spend the money just to be able to place a disc. Or you can pull in there, place a disc, and switch out the Station Master for one of your workers. And also, remember that you do have to make that decision at the time you pull in. And Yellow did it correctly. He pulled into that space made the decision to spend the money and place the disc and switch the Station Master tile. He couldn't have just sat there and waited till a future action or future turn and then said, okay, now that I've got the money or whatever, I'm going to go ahead and take that action to place the disc. Do it at the time you enter that space. And the last thing I want to talk about from this example is switching out one of your workers for the Station Master tile. If you're going to take the Station Master tile, you do have to give up a worker. But sometimes people interpret the rulebook to be a bit more restrictive than it actually is. Here's how the rulebook puts it. It says, to do this, choose from your worker section any of your hired workers currently placed on the rightmost space of its respective row. Now that part about rightmost space sometimes has people thinking that it has to come from one of these three spaces. But that's not the case. It just has to be the rightmost of however many workers you happen to have on the row you're taking it from. So let's say Yellow's uh, board looked more like this, with a number of workers available. Now he, could, uh, he couldn't choose from here because there's no worker tiles available to switch out. He's got a couple cowboys here, a couple engineers. So if he takes from this row, it would have to be the rightmost cowboy. If he takes from this row, it would have to be the rightmost engineer. But it's not so limited that he would have to wait 
until he gets a row all the way filled up to be able to take a, um, a worker from the rightmost space and move it um, and replace the Station Master tile. Moving on to Blue's turn, she's going to move two steps, one, two, to one of her own buildings. The action on the left side has two options and she'll go with the double auxiliary action. Looking over her player board, she wants to take the action here where she can spend a dollar to move her train backward one space and gain a certificate. Even though she's taking a double auxiliary action, the side's locked, so she'll just do that action once. So she'll pay a dollar for that. She'll gain the certificate. She'll move her train backward one space, skipping over red and into the pullout. She wants to place a disc here, so she'll pay two dollars for that. She'll remove a disc from the other side of that action she was just using, and she'll place her disc there. Going back to the building, she'll now do the action on the right side, and that's pretty straightforward. She'll just move her train forward two spaces. She'll skip over red for one and two, and that completes her turn. Everything was legal that turn. A couple things worth touching on. Uh, one is, yes, it's legal to back into a pullout. And it's legal uh, if you stop there when backing in to place a disc, just like you do when you're moving forward, forward and stop there. Also, just like with the cities, it's legal for more than one player to place a disc into a station. Okay, now Red's up for the final question of the challenge. He's going to move two steps. One, two, and join yellow on this neutral D building. Instead of going with train movement like Yellow did, Red's going to take an outlaw. You know, I think I might have been calling them bandits earlier in the video, uh, but it's definitely outlaws in uh, this edition of the rules, at least. Maybe it was bandits in the previous edition. Whatever the case may be, he's going to grab one. He'll take this one here and gain $3 and put it into his play area. Now he'll take the double auxiliary action. Red's going to split up that double auxiliary action. Uh, so, and first, just take one action here to gain a dollar. And then the second action he'll take here to gain a dollar, move his train one step backwards, and trash a card. So first gain the dollar. He'll trash this gray cow here, removing it from the game. He'll mimic Blue's maneuver from earlier and back up one space into that pullout and pay two dollars to place a disc there. He'll take a white disc from his player board. He'll place the disc there and that'll end Red's turn. The thing Red did wrong was in the way he handled that double auxiliary action. You shouldn't think of this as just, hey, I get to do two auxiliary actions. It's that you get to do one type of auxiliary action, and if you have unlocked it, you do it twice. Looking at how his player board was at the time he took that action, he had three options. This action, this action, and this action, because the other two were locked. So he had to pick one of those three actions, and then, in this case, he could have done it twice. In this case, he could have done it twice. But the dollar, the one for just gaining a dollar, he could not do that twice. So when he took this action, he should have done it once, and that was it. That was the end of the action. Instead, he took this action once, and then took this action once, which is illegal. There's another aspect of this that I think is interesting, and maybe people are even more likely to get wrong. Let's say Red did it right and you know, skipped doing this action here and just took an action on this. A way Red might have handled this turn was to say, okay, I'm going to take the first action, I'll get my dollar, back up my train, trash a card, play, you know, pay and place a disc. Then I'll do it a second time, get my dollar, back up my train, trash a card. 
But that's not how the double auxiliary actions work. It's not take one action and resolve it, then take a second action and resolve it. You do them together. So in this case, if you decide to do both of them, it's take two dollars, back up your train two spaces, trash two cards. So he would not have been able to do it once, back into that pullout, place a disc, then do it a second time. It actually took me quite a while to notice that nuance in the rules. But, uh, you know, if you're curious to double check it, take a look at page 16 of the rule book under the double auxiliary action column. That principle holds true for all these actions. So to take this one, for example, you don't draw a card, then discard one, then draw another card and discard one. You draw two cards and then discard two cards. All right, I'm gonna wrap things up there. Hopefully you got something out of the video. If you think I got something wrong or just had a question, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Uh, otherwise, I hope to see you in the next video.